everyone and welcome to another review from Colour with Claire. Today I've got a really really special book. I know I say that a lot but this really is super super special. It's called Queens of Poland and it's by Christina Nowak. Now you'll recognise her name and possibly the look of the front cover because she bought this book out not too long ago, Slavic Beauties. Now just look at them side by side. Absolutely gorgeous gorgeous books and I know you can't obviously feel them through the camera but I wish you could because the production quality is really second to none honestly I've seen a lot of colouring books over my time and this is you know one of the highest standards of quality that I've seen in production so this new book Queens of Poland actually has 10 more illustrations than the first book which as you can see is really thick and full of illustrations as it is so you're getting another 10 in this there's 45 altogether with an extra five in grayscale so queens of poland now obviously in the previous book it was all about the slavic beauties now we've got the polish queens the book itself is hardback there's the knock test and on the back you can see three of the illustrations from inside and it's telling you that you've got 50 colouring pages depicting 45 queens. This is not a scientific work and the images of the women presented in the book are an artistic inspiration. However, these ladies all really existed and perhaps thanks to this book we'll learn their long forgotten names and stories. So they all truly existed in history, these Polish queens, but uh, the actual depiction of them might not be exact to how they really did look. It's uh, Christina's, it's her interpretation of them and she does a fantastic job. So I'll open it up. We've got the title page and it also tells you down the bottom here which number, which edition you've got. I've got print number 500 of 850 in the first edition. Then we've got all of Christina's um, social medias for you to follow her on there. I actually was following her when she was just a colourist and she used to colour everyone else's work. And then she decided to create her own pages and that's how this book was made. Um, one of my favourite illustrators already, even though this is only her second book, uh, she's really flown up to the top of my uh, illustrator list because her work is just incredible. So Queens of Poland, we've got a little bit for you to colour there if you wish. Now we've got the little note from the publisher. It said that this is a colouring book that's meant to promote. It's not a textbook and it should not be treated as a source of knowledge. It's only an inspiration meant to encourage you to reach for historical materials so as to get more acquainted with the lives, deeds and beliefs of Polish queens. Their stories are an amazing page in our history. The author used available publications and online materials when creating her portraits so that the illustrations would be as close to the truth as possible. However, the images in the books are not true likenesses. They're a product of imagination, which you can wonderfully expand on and embellish with your own sensitivity and colours. We then have a bit of a note from Christina. I'm not going to read the entire thing, but she's just saying that this was a really big labour of love for her and her publisher. The uh, publisher rang her with the proposition of creating a colouring book of Polish queens, which she was really enthusiastic about. She went online and researched it. Um and you know did some really in-depth research about all the different queens and she's saying that she hopes the portraits that she's drawn will at least have captured a little bit of the personalities of the queens and then it's her acknowledgements so this is the list of all of the queens uh, that's featured in the book 45 of them and then five of them uh, in grayscale so that's not an extra five it's not it's not um individual illustrations they've all already been done in the book but she's just converted five of them to grayscale so it's exactly the same format as the previous book slavic beauties you've got the information on the left and the picture on the right and they're also done in uh i think is this i think this is polish isn't it i think uh i think it's polish and then english of course so anybody can read it whether you're uk uh, english speaking or uh polish so this first lady is called Dobrava of Bohemia. She was a Bohemian princess married to Mieszko, the first historical ruler of Poland. She was credited with playing a major role in convincing her husband to accept Christianity. The baptism of Poland took place in 966 and our country joined other European Christian nations. 
Since she allegedly played a huge part in the history of our country, on most po portraits, de Brava is shown with a candle and a book, which is to symbolise the enlightenment and knowledge that were brought to Poland with the advent of Christianity. So that's, I'm not going to read all of them, but that's the kind of background that you get on each and every single illustration. And I honestly do enjoy learning about, you know, different parts of history that I had no clue existed. I think we all do, don't we? we all, we're all interested in things that have come before. And this is a really accessible way of giving yourself a history lesson and possibly even, you know, it's a starting point for you to go on and then do your own research and find out about these amazing women. So we've got uh, Oda of Meissen. Obviously, I'm not going to be saying these correctly. Uh, this is Risheza of Lothring. Yeah, no, no idea. I'm not even going to I'm not even going to attempt to say them all because I know they're wrong. But let's just have a look at the illustrations. As you can tell, they are just incredibly realistic. They're not as hyper realistic as I've seen some people paint, you know, and they look literally like a photograph, but it's not far off. It's very much in the same style as Mario Labudek and Laura Rafferty and all those amazing um, illustrators. So if you love colouring portraits, you really cannot get any better than this uh, for a colouring book. So absolutely gorgeous. As you can see, this is one I've already started. This is Maria Dobronyenga of Kiev maybe. Um, she was a Ruthenian princess who married the Polish king Casimir the Restorer to seal the treaty between Poland and Ruthenia. Since Poland was the weaker side on this occasion, it had to release 800 prisoners taken in earlier conflicts. Maria lived for a very long time, passing away at the age of 77. So I've been colouring this with Caran d'Ache Luminance pencils and I'm really pleased with the way it's going so far. I did kind of mess up the nose a bit but I've, I've saved it and what was quite funny is I was actually colouring this while watching The Crown. I've got into that recently, it's absolutely fantastic. So yes, can't wait to finish that one off. So this lady, again, just just beautiful portraits, you know, you could you could go on and on about each one but they're all just incredibly stunningly beautiful. And they have loads of jewellery and embellishments and the costume of the time as well, you know, the time period. This lady looks almost Egyptian in a, in a way, but I'm sure this is probably just um, how they used to dress in Austria and Poland those days. But I don't know why, it just kind of reminds me of an Egyptian headdress. So we have a kind of side on view as well. A lot of them are looking from the side. They're not all looking directly at camera. Then you've got ones like this with the eyes closed and you can practice the hands as well. As you can see, Christina's style is quite heavily shaded, but not true grayscale, which I believe is the best balance because it really helps you know where to put your shadows and highlights. For example, if I just get out Slavic Beauties again, I'll show you the one that I finished, which you will have already seen. Where is it? Okay, here we go. So you can see with that kind of grayscale and that kind of shading, it makes it really, really easy to tell exactly where the folds are in the fabric and all of the darker areas and then the lighter highlights and things. So yeah, I absolutely love her style. And as I've said before, I'll just keep going through it so you can see the illustrations. But as I've said before, the production quality on these books is outstanding. The paper is super, super thick. It's, you know, it's almost this cardstock, really. Um, it's got a gorgeous tooth to it. Not too rough, but not at all glossy or smooth. It really does have a perfect tooth for pencils. And it's just, there's, there's nothing whatsoever criticism wise that I can say about this book at all. So if you're looking for a super high quality book of female portraits, it doesn't matter that they're queens or you know any of the background behind it if you don't want if you're not interested in that that's totally fine. If you just want to practice your portraits and you want to do it on something that is super high quality and very very well made, then this is certainly a massive contender. I'm trying to think of other portrait books which are as high quality of this, and I can't, I can't think of any. I know Mariola Budek did her set of art, which was loose leaf pages. They were really high quality, but this is a hardback bound book. It's incredibly thick, and 
the illustrations and usually it's one of the two one of the two lets it down it's either the production quality or the illustrations aren't too great or you know there's some there's always something but with this book i can honestly say there is just nothing to critique whatsoever I mean, look, this is an older lady, as you can see, so you can be practising older skin tones, uh, liver spots, things like that, you know, stuff that you might not normally colour. Obviously, different uh, styles of hair. We've got also lots of animals included. I don't think I've ever coloured a swan. but well, this probably isn't a swan. It looks like it's got too much of a long beak to be a swan, but I don't think I've ever coloured one of those, so that would be nice. Um... Again, not your typical kind of beautiful, thin, skinny ladies. You know, sometimes you've got these more plus size, larger, beautiful ladies as well, which I always love to have included. Ringlets. I've, I, I, I get scared of colouring ringlets because there's just so much. But I think I might give it a go for this one. Then you're also looking at how to colour the fabric how to colour the nature elements that are on the page. Uh, there's lots of flowers and leaves and things like that. We've even got a little puppy. This is just stunning. I mean, it is almost like, like a photograph that's been, that's been stripped down to line art. It re really captures something. All of these capture the essence of a person. And I think that is so, so difficult. And it's such a talent to achieve. I honestly wish that Christina had started making colouring books just years and years ago so that we'd have more, more of her work. Hopefully these two are just going to be the start of her artist's career because just stunning, just stunning. We've got Maria Casimaya, no idea. Uh, Christian, no, I'm not going to attempt it. I love the frames on some of them though. You can see we've got some really simple frames. It almost looks like a camo brooch, this one. We've got more of a background detail on this with the arches. That's some really large hair, isn't it? Can you imagine all the hairspray you'd need to use for that? beautiful ringlets again and then we've moved on to the grayscale illustrations so these are ones you'll have already seen throughout the book but they've been converted into a darker grayscale for people that prefer that kind of thing which is a really really nice inclusion and even if you don't even if you never do grayscale you can practice because it's only a few pages in the back of the book and it just gives you that space to practice. You can um, test out your different colouring materials on these back pages. And then you can see some of the other colouring books that have been released. And there it is. It is just incredible. I think I think you've you've got the gist from how I've been talking about it the whole way through. But it's right up my street. I think that's all I can say. I love uh, portraiture and I love colouring women and, and people and I think you can't get any better book than this at the moment uh, for that so I'm going to be leaving links in the description for where you can buy both of these books actually this one was the first one as I say and this one is brand new so uh, really really excited about this release it's one that as soon as it came through the door I really was really excited to get it open so um thank you so so much for watching let me know what you think in the comments don't forget to subscribe to the channel please um a lot of people are coming and watching but not subscribing so it would really really help me if you would subscribe to the channel and uh you'll get to see everything i'm doing from now on so thanks so much and i'll see you soon on color with claire